Hello everyone. This is Professor C. M. Balia, Assistant Research Scientist, Department of Plant Pathology, College of Agriculture, Junagad Agricultural University, Junagad. First of all, I hope that all the students are very well. We all know that our examination may be taken after the completion of the lockdown period. So, we are arranging this certain online lecture for you people. Pertaining to that, we are continuous our syllabus with my last lecture that is survey, surveillance and forecasting of the disease. This topic is very much important for the exam point of view. From this topic, various definition, difference and uh, certain long question that is describe or brief explain question may be asked in examination. In this chapter different uh, forecasting model for the plant disease is also given. So which may be asked in a MCQ form or the filling the blanks form. Let us start over the topic. So by seeing the title first question may be raised in the mind what is survey. So here the one photograph is given. In this photograph, the many peoples are observing the certain pathogen or the pest in field. It may be rice field, okra field, maize field, cooker bit field. And by observing the pest and pathogen that collect the data. So by observing this photograph, we can simply say that the survey is a planned activity which collect the raw data of the particular things which may be pathogen or the uh, pest. Second question may be rise, what is surveillance? So surveillance is a one type of survey, but survey the same plot or same area or the locality that is carried out at the regular interval to record the some observation whether the any changes is take place or not. So this is the surveillance. In the other word we can say that it is a close and constant vigil on the pathogen population in a particular area. According to the international standard for the phytosanitary measure that is decided by the IPPC that is International Plant Protection Convention and uh, this measure gives the certain definition. Uh, like a surveillance. So surveillance is an official process which collect and record the data of the particular pest whether it is present or absent by using the various methods like a survey, monitoring and other processes. And uh, survey we already discussed it is an official process to conduct over the definite period of time to determine the characteristic of the pest population and also determine the which species that occur in this particular area. Now monitoring, so monitoring an official ongoing process to verify the phytosanitary situation. That means whether the pathogen present or not in particular area. Monitoring is also important to the farmer. By knowing and unknowing, farmer monitoring continuously their crop, their field and by monitoring the field or the crop they know the various pest or pathogen whether present in the field or not and according to they, they take the control measure and a monitoring survey, it is an ongoing survey that is already started but in monitoring survey that verify, that determine the characteristic of different pathogen population or the pest population. Now disease surveillance include or involve looking for or recording the presence or absence of the pathogen. It also record the distribution of the pathogen and the population of the pathogen. Population in terms of inoculum load of the pathogen, amount of the initial inoculum present and from where the disease is started. Disease surveillance is conducted over the period of time 
and it is conducted in a scientific manner by adopting this certain scientific technique. Now the objective of survey and surveillance. The first objective to monitor the pathogen population and the damage caused by them. So on the basis of the survey and surveillance uh, observation or the data collected by the survey and surveillance, decision is taken whether to take the control measure or not. If the control measure is required, when to initiate the control measures that is decided on the basis of information that is obtained by the survey and surveillance. Information of survey and surveillance also helpful for the disease forecasting as well as also become helpful for identifying the endemic area of the various diseases. Endemic area that means the particular disease occurs throughout the year or year to year in a particular locality in moderate to severe form that is known as endemic area. So uh, whatever the information obtained by the survey and surveillance it become helpful for the identifying the endemic area. Uh, information of survey and surveillance is also become helpful to find out the future population of the pathogen and the respective yield loss caused by them. So it will also become helpful for the past risk analysis. It also useful for the establishment of the past free area which become helpful to establish the trade policy with the other foreign countries. And nowadays we know the importance of survey surveillance and monitoring. As we all know that the pandemic of COVID-19 is going on and continuous monitoring survey and surveillance of the infected patient uh, maybe reduce the spreading of this disease. Now different kinds of survey. Generally two types of this survey, qualitative survey and quantitative survey. In case of qualitative survey that include the identification of the different species of the pathogen. While in case of quantitative survey involve the estimation of the population of the pathogen. So you can say the amount of pathogen inoculum present in a particular area that include one over the more species of the pathogen. The another type of the survey that is random survey or planned survey. The random survey is also known as the roving survey. The name random itself indicates that the sample are collected randomly from any crop at any place suspected to be infected. In case of random survey, a larger area covered in a shorter period of time. While plant survey is divided into the two types, extensive survey and intensive survey. Extensive survey that involve or take the vast area into the consideration. That means larger area considered for the survey. While in case of intensive survey, it considers the specific area or the specific area is selected for the survey purpose. In case of extensive survey, whatever the information is generated is primary for the basic information of the pathogen. While in case of intensive survey, detailed information or detailed knowledge of the pathogen in the particular region or in the particular probe is recorded. So this is the different uh, types of survey. So it may be asked in a different form, differentiate form. In the examination. Now this is the different terms related to survey. First sampling. Sampling that means it is a simple process of collecting the sample from the representative portion of the population. Sampling determines how credible and reliable the result are. Here the one uh, diagram is given. In rectangular this is the population uh, for example, we assume that uh, this rectangular um, is a field of the groundnut that contains the 100 plant of the groundnut. So during this survey, we are not taking the 100 plant as a sample. Out of 100 plant, we are taking only 5 to 10 plant as a sample. As a sample. 
so out of 100 uh, plant taking 5 to 10 plant is a sample by the process that is known as sampling and whatever the 5 to 10 plant is selected particularly infected plant is selected that is known as sample so after collecting the sample sample unit is analyzed so what is sample unit so whatever 5 to 10 infected plant is selected among the each plant leaf root flower pod each of the part of the plant is known as sampling unit so during the analysis each of the sampling unit is analyzed and whatever the result forms is uh, declared now what is sample it is a representative of the particular area from which information is required you can also say the group of sampling unit from which data are collected or estimation is made sampling unit it is a portion of the habitat for which pathogen count are made which may be plant branch leaves or floating bodies or sometimes it is microflora it is the smallest unit for which information is gathered now the sampling technique so whatever method used for the collection of the data or the information from this single sampling unit that is known as simple sampling technique now different sampling technique or survey technique there are many sampling techniques is available for collecting the primary or secondary data these are mentioned here random sampling systemic sampling stratified sampling cluster sampling convenience sampling judgment sampling quota sampling and last snowball sampling so these are the various methods of the sampling actually this methods is not in our course this is just for your understanding purpose now different tools that is useful for the disease survey during the survey of the disease the first that is trap nursery trap nursery is generally utilized for detecting the new virulence strain of the pathogen enter into the area or it is also utilized for the screening of the germplasm against the particular trees second mobile one we all know the mobile one clinical one that goes to the different location and collect the sample so with the help of mobile one we can collect the larger sample in a limited period of time vector population third we all know that particularly plant virus that is spread by the many vector vector most of the vector are insect particularly sucking insect or sucking pest so by knowing the vector population we ultimate get the idea about the plant viral disease on how it spread so it is an indicator of the pathogen activity and threat potential to the crop in this season here is one example of the aphid is given so aphid population is uh, surveyed or measured by the uh, establishing the traps into the field particularly yellow sticky stick so survey of the vector population is also become helpful for um, by in the development of distribution and movement maps of the vector species number 4 that is spore trapping the spore trapping device and spore trapping nurseries uh, is very much important for surveying the airborne disease it is also useful for the forecasting of the airborne disease here the one device the one photograph is given of the spore tracking device simply this spore tracking device is established on the field this spore tracking device directly trap or catch the spore from the air on the basis of identification of the particular spore we can forecast the disease we can survey we can survey for the particular disease so this is all about survey and surveillance now we move over the next topic of this chapter that is plant disease forecasting we all know the 
weather forecasting very well and the importance of the weather forecasting to the farmers and other peoples similarly the plant disease forecasting is also very much helpful to the farmer so plant disease forecasting means predicting for the occurrence of the plant disease in a specific area before the time or before the disease development in advance so that suitable control measure can be taken in advance and we can save over the crop and ultimately we can save the yield losses it is prediction of the probable outbreak of the disease we can also say that the prediction of increasing the intensity of disease in future here the definition of the plant disease forecasting is given that is given by the miller and oprain in 1952 according to them disease forecasting involves all the activity in ascertaining and notifying the growers of the community growers of the community that means farmer that condition are sufficiently favorable for the starting disease that application and control measure will result in economic gain or that is the disease expected is unlikely to be enough to justify the expenditure of time energy and money to be utilized for its control simply we can say that disease forecasting can give the idea to the growers or the farmers that this situation or this environmental condition is most favorable for the disease development if you take the certain preventative step or protective step before the disease come then you can save your crop for the yield now the forecasting system are developed for the disease which are uh, that cause the economic losses in term of quality and quantity for example apple scare forecasting system is developed for those diseases which occur severely and cause the huge losses and the disease which develop on the basis of weather conditions for example potato leaf blight similarly forecasting system is developed for those diseases whose control measure is known and farmer is effectively and economically applied and it also develop for those diseases which epidemiology fully known epidemiology that means uh, how it spread how it uh, increased how it um, uh, started initiation all these things now before uh, forecasting any disease certain information certain basic information is required here the one photograph is given we all know that Um, this is the photograph of disease triangle disease triangle have a three component susceptible host virulent pathogen and favorable environmental condition the fourth component that is time and nowadays fifth component of the disease uh, pyramid is also given that is human so all these five component are interrelated with each other for the disease development any of this component is weak then 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 the disease may not be developed so before forecasting of any disease certain basic information is required from this component we see one by one first that is host information you can say that host uh, factors that is required for the disease forecasting so to know the prevalence of the susceptible variety in a given locality so to know whether the susceptible variety is present in the area for which the forecasting you know, is done uh, know the different stage of the growth to the activity of the pathogen because some diseases are occur at the specific period of time for example many diseases come at the seedling stage some are comes at the fruiting stage some are comes at the flowering stage 
so it is very much important to know the stage of the growth and third that is density and distribution of the host density dense population of the susceptible variety uh, quickly spread the disease so these are the basic information is required from the host side for the disease forecasting similarly certain information is required from the pathogen side like as amount of the primary inoculum that is present in the air soil or the planting material dispersal of the inoculum how it spread spore germination infection and incubation period incubation period we all know that that is the time lapse between the infection and the symptom expression so on the basis of this pathogenic you know, information we can forecast for the disease here the one two example is given for the monocyclic disease like as root rot of the peas and stewart wilt of the corn the forecasting of the disease is done on the basis of amount of initial inoculum present in the soil similarly for the polycyclic disease like as lead blight of potato where the initial inoculum is less but the infection cycle increase very rapid rate so disease forecasting done on the basis of increasing the rate of occurrence of infection cycle how the infection cycle is repeated similarly certain information is required from the environmental side like a temperature humidity light intensity wind velocity rainfall these are the various information required for the environmental side for the forecasting of any disease so these are the three component of the disease triangle and information of this the, from this three component is required before the forecasting of any disease now before uh, developing the any forecasting system certain points should be kept in mind that may uh, maybe the crop must be highly economically valuable disease uh, that cause the huge yield losses this should not be regular trend to certainty effective and economic control measures should be known by the growers reliable means of communication with farmer and farmer should be adaptive and uh, having the purchasing power now basis of basis forecasting generally forecasting of the disease is done on the basis of several parameter among them certain parameter are discussed here first that is forecasting based on the primary inoculum from where the disease is started the presence of primary inoculum its density that means amount and uh, viability are determined in the air soil and planting material and on the basis of this forecasting for the particular disease is done for example for the airborne disease or for the forecasting of the airborne disease viable spore and propagules in the air can be determined by using the various spore trapping device we already discussed uh, earlier in um, serving surveillance portion the spore trapping device similarly for the soil borne disease primary inoculum in the soil can be obtained by the monoculture method similarly loose mud of wheat argot of permelet and viral disease of potato in which the pathogen are uh, incorporated with the seed load so that uh, the primary inoculum is determined in the basis of various seed testing method second that is forecasting done on the basis of weather condition weather condition like a temperature relative humidity rainfall light wind velocity which is measured during the crop season weather condition of the soil surface and crop surface are measured and on the basis of this weather condition forecasting is done uh, here the one ex successful example of the forecast based on the weather condition is given uh, in holland dutch rules is developed that is uh, developed on the basis of weather condition and according to this dutch rule uh, forecasting for the lead blight disease in potato crop is done 
Now this rule um, said that night temperature below the dew point for at least 4 hours. Minimum temperature for the 10 degree or above. Mean cloudiness on the next day. 0.1 mm of rainfall during the next 24 hours. If these four weather parameters are satisfied by the environment, then we can say that there may be chances of lead like disease in potato crop. And according to them, the forecasting for the disease is done and advice to the farmers is then to take the certain prophylactic measures. Number third, that is forecasting based on the correlative information. So weather data of the several year are collected and it is this weather data are correlated with the intensity of the disease. And according to this correlation, the forecasting of the particular disease is done. This type of the correlative information become very much helpful for the forecasting of the certain disease like a septarial leaf loss of wheat, fire black of apple and barley powder in wheat. Now number 4, disease forecasting based on the computer. This method is widely utilized nowadays for the forecasting of the disease as well as weather. Many computer based simulation model for the forecasting of the plant disease is uh, available worldwide. Among them most successful example that is uh, given here that is Blyticas and Neck Fry that is developed by USA for the forecasting of the light blight disease in pocket. Uh, now this is the model for disease forecasting or the production. Generally two type of model is that empirical model and simulation model. Empirical model that is model developed on the basis of growers or scientists experiment, uh, experience. For example Dutch roots developed for the forecasting of the lead blood disease important. Simulation model developed on the basis of theoretical relationship and the experimentation. Here the different example of the simulation model is given and uh, it may be asked in a MCQ form in examination. So first that is EpiMay, this model for the forecasting of southern leaf light of May, EpiPen, model for disease, apple step disease, EpiDem, model for alternaria blight of potato and tomato, Ep EpiPri, model for cereal rust and aphid, Hast, Model for forecasting of alternative of Solani on tomato. Storm cast model for alternaria, septoria and anthracnose that is polytropicum um, infection in tomato. Wisdom model for forecasting of lead blight on tomato and potato. Mel cast for the forecasting of the disease in the cucurbitus crop, watermelon and musk melon that include Anthracnose, the mishkan blight and alternaria. Mary blight model for the forecasting of fire blight in apple. Epicone forecasting of the southern corn leaf blight. And uh, one model developed for the tobacco crop in northern American blue mold warning system. So these are the various simulation models available worldwide for the forecasting of many plant diseases. <coughs> Now this is the example of one uh, online model um, that is developed for the plant disease forecasting. If the student uh, uh, want to visit this uh, online model, simply they can um, write this site in Google and um, assess this uh, online model. When you are opening this model, the first phase is introduction. Generally, this model is for uh, USA. So, whatever the information is provided in this is uh, for the USA country, and uh, whatever the crop is covered, that is from USA. In the introduction uh, phase, you can found the basic information of crop, climate, uh, how to identify the different uh, pathogen and the pest in particular crop different IBM strategies also 
mention in the introduction page. Second, uh, that is a quick start in second page. In this uh, different crop is mentioned here. Whatever the crop grown in the USA, fruit crop, vegetable crop, cereal crop that is given here. You can select the any of the crop and uh, by entering your zip code or your uh, country or state code or the district code, you can get your uh, the forecasting information for a week or for a month. Now third, that is map index. So this online forecasting uh, model can also prepare the one map. And in this map, the intensity of the disease is given. That is highly risky area, medium risky area, low risky. We can see in next next slide. So here, uh, this is the one example of tomato black mold. And uh, in map, you can see the low risk area with green dose, medium risk area that is yellow dose and high risk area the red zone. So by seeing this uh, map we can uh, conclude that the high risk areas that is marked by the red portion should not uh, adopt the tomato uh, crop. Now this is the device. Uh, used in the plant disease forecasting. So various devices used for the plant disease forecasting. Among them first is GPS, that is Global Positioning System. We all are aware about the GPS because we are using the various Android and iPhone. So no need to explain about the GPS. So simply it is satellite system that gives the information to the users uh, regarding the latitude and longitude coordinates. Generally GPS has become very much helpful during this survey. No doubt it will also become helpful in the plant disease forecasting. So GPS can identify the area, field or locality that is affected by the pathogen. If we want to visit the same places or same field or same the locality in the future, to see whether any changes is take place or not. So we can simply uh, uh, enter in the latitude longitude coordinate directly into the Google map and we can directly reach at the same locality or the same place with the help of GPS. So this is the importance of GPS. Similarly second tools that is GIS, Geographic Information System. It is also satellite based computer system. Uh, designed to capture, store, manipulate, analyze, and manage and present all the type of geographical data. It is an important tool that can be applied in predicting, monitoring, and controlling the disease. GIS is often useful for the spatial and temporal analysis of disease development. Spatial analysis of the disease that means to describe or examine the disease in a various geographical region. While in case of temporal analysis involved, the examination of the disease over time in a particular geographical area. On the basis of geo, GIS, geographical information system, we can find out the role and importance of the various geographical area in the initiation and development of the disease. And we can find out the uh, particular area from which the disease is started. So this is all about uh, surveys, surveillance and uh, forecasting of the plant disease. These are the various uh, books and online links which is uh, utilized for preparation of this lecture. Student can also utilize this online links, uh, links and the reference book for the further studies. And uh, I also uh, thankful for the different scientists and the writers of this book and the uh, whatever the person that provide the online information, which uh, become helpful to, for the preparation of this uh, lecture. I am heartily thankful to all these people. Uh, so this is all about uh, survey surveillance.
and uh, the forecasting of the plant disease. Uh, if the student have any question regarding this uh, uh, topic, so they can directly ask on my Google Classroom, uh, and I will uh, upload this uh, video in YouTube and share the links in the Google Classroom. I will also upload this uh, video and PPT in our uh, M software as well as I also uploaded in our uh, WhatsApp group. Thank you for watching this video.